and here's the next point about mixing. In mixing, and I dare you all to listen to my stems of any mixes I do, they are not what you will ever, ever expect. They will be disappointing, OK? Very disappointing. You pull, I always, you know, when I work on any song, I always, uh, one of the things about mixing, obviously, you print all of your mixes, right? Your final, uh, for example, you have your final mix, you have your lead vocal down, very useful these days, you know, lead vocal down, lead vocal up at different levels, you know, half a dB, one dB, such on. And you also print your TV mixes, which means, you know, uh, your mix minus the lead vocal, usually, or lead elements, and your instrumental mixes, right? Instrumental mix. But then you also print, especially these days, because we do for two different reasons. We, pl you, we print the stems. One, one of the reasons why we print the stems is for tour support. They usually tra take the tracks live on tour. And it doesn't mean that they're going to be using these stems necessarily. Very often they don't. But they can listen to the stems and make sense of the parts, of the musical parts. Very often these days, you don't have charts that they are giving to every musician live. So they, sometimes they need to hear it uh, clearly. And from the, they cannot with the final mix. But if you have like a guitar stem, or even, you know, like, uh, for example, acoustic guitar stem. OK, you can, they, they have it. They can always go and, OK, this is the call. Oh, it's a minor seven. They know. I mean, they can very easily work with that, right? So that's one of the reasons. The other reason why we do this is because they can use it live, too. That's another reason. Sometimes they use some of the stems live. They play against the click, and they use uh, stems, as you know. But the other reason is to be able to fix mixes. More often than not, these days, you work on a mix, as I work on a mix a day, or three mixes every two day, mixes get popping out, popping out. People receive the mixes. Sometimes, they don't, very often, they don't get back to you right away. Because you are not just working on one project. You are, you are working on five projects, and you mix a project for five days, another one for two days, and whatnot. So when you start hearing back, sometimes some of the fixes that you have are so minimalistic. So, I mean, so minimal that you can fix with the stems. You can also fix more relevant things with the stems, but I'm usually talking about minimalistic things, like I want more acoustic guitar. Well, it will be as easy as, OK, I duplicate the acoustic guitar, right? I have my final mix. OK, I add some of the acoustic guitar to the final mix, right? I have a, I have a guitar, acoustic guitar mix already, right? It's how long did it take? Obviously, you have to always listen to it. You have to be musical about it. You don't just do it. You have to analyze what level. You even start automating. You might even uh, think that, OK, I only need the, I only want that uh, to happen on a very, a very specific part of the song, do you know? There might be a very specific part of the song where you want it to be raised, right? Uh, you just automate it like the way you would in a regular mix. Like you automate the different elements, we're gonna get into that. You, you might think, okay, only from this point, I want the acoustic guitar up. So you automate, and you listen, you hear it, you know? And you have your fix to the mix. That versus recalling a full mix, if you have a lot of gear in your studio, makes a huge difference. Makes the difference between fixing a mix in five minutes versus fixing a mix in three hours. That's the difference. I mean, that's how big of a difference it is.